sisters and brothers in the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Indiana, grace and peace be with you in the risen Christ. It's Sunday afternoon, the 3rd of July, and I've just gotten home from serving as the supply priest at St. John the Evangelist in Elkhart. It was wonderful to be with you this morning, and I want to thank you for your welcome and your embrace. I also want to extend uh, my gratitude and humility for all of the people who gathered last weekend for the ordination celebration. It was a, a wonderful, prayerful, grace-filled moment. Thank you for the readers, for, for those who were involved in liturgy, everyone who came together to make that day an important time and way for us to begin our ministry together. I'm especially grateful for the musicians and the, the people in the choir. Uh, you enabled us to sing and praise in a way that just makes it so much more important and wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for driving to Fort Wayne. And also thank you for joining us virtually. We look forward to being able to upload that onto the website so that you have access to the recorded video. I also want to say a word of thanks to the people at St. Augustine's in Gary who welcomed the presiding bishop and me and many others on Sunday morning. Um, Thank you for your hospitality. Thanks to the other faith communities and the Calumet Episcopal Ministry Partnership who gathered there with us. It was a wonderful celebration. And I am, I'm just so grateful that, that Presiding Bishop Michael Curry is the face of the Episcopal Church in our leadership uh, at this time, this missional moment. On Monday, many of us received word of the shocking news of the deaths of Lori and Kashmir Morris, who were members of St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Valparaiso. They were killed in a, uh, in a car accident, and uh, we received that news. And on Saturday, uh, Bishop Ed and I, along with many other people, gathered at St. Andrew's to give thanks for the gift of their life and to remember their impact on the lives of so many people. Uh, I'd ask that you continue to uphold their children, their grandchildren, and all of their relatives and extended family but also please uphold the people of St. Andrews in your prayer at this time, uh, in the days and weeks and months ahead as they, as they grieve uh, the loss of these two important people in their faith community, that they might be encircled in resurrection hope. A another event that took place this past week was our Senior High Mission Week, uh, Mission Impossible. Uh, this is the second year that our young people have gathered looking for opportunities to engage God's mission in various uh, faith communities and uh, in our diocese. I joined them on Tuesday at Holy Trinity in South Bend uh, as part of the Vacation Bible School program. And then I joined them again on Wednesday uh, at St. John's in Elkhart as they helped to spruce up the, the facility. And then on Friday, I, I joined them at Grace College for a meal and their concluding Eucharist. Uh, I'm inspired by their witness and I'm sure you are as well. And I encourage every faith community to consider inviting them uh, to be part of a particular mission opportunity that you're engaging in as they plan for 2017's week in June. So please consider doing that. Remember my favorite hymn from Wonder, Love, and Praise? We all are one in mission. We all are one in call. Well, uh, as I promised in my last video to you, uh, I would share with you some of the, the news about transition uh, in our staff process. And one of the, the changes that I'm implementing uh, is to, to be, begin calling our staff missioners because their primary responsibility is to assist you in engaging God's mission in your particular context, whether that be in South Bend or Bern, Kokomo, wherever that is. And so I want to share this news with you and promise that I'll have a, a, a longer written text that will be sent out through our constant contact list uh, earlier in the week. Uh, one of the primary missioners is the missioner uh, for the bishop. And that person, while she will continue to serve as the priest in charge at Holy Trinity in South Bend, is Mother Terry Bays. She will become the missioner for the bishop. It's a part-time position, uh, and her primary responsibilities will be helping with transitions, our faith communities and transitions, and also to look at all of the governance and compliance kinds of things that were formerly under the umbrella of the canon to the ordinary. The second missioner is the missioner for administration and communication. Uh, that person is Mother Michelle Walker. 
she will also be continuing as one of the important priest developers of the Calumet Episcopal Ministry Partnership and will, will be working part-time as the missioner for administration and communication. Uh, the third missioner you already know because uh, Father Henry Randolph has been doing the vocations director's position uh, on the ordination process and what we're inviting him to do is to expand that responsibility to include uh, formation for lay persons as well. So his title will be the Missioner for Formation. Uh, we're blessed with people who know how to do finances really, really well. And to that end, uh, I'm inviting uh, two people to serve as our missioners for finance. Heidi Bagheer, who serves as the receptionist Tuesdays through Fridays uh, at the cathedral, will be working for us on Mondays as our missioner for finance. And Sharon Katona will also assist her as another missioner for finance to deal with all of the complexities of our financial situation. And the two of them are quite skilled and gifted, and I am enormously grateful for their willingness to help us at this time. Uh, the last missioner is yet to be known because I'm going to invite the deacons who are canonically resident in our diocese to gather with me. And I want to invite our deacons to consider nominating someone from among them to serve as the missioner for the deacons so that uh, that person can work with me in supporting the diaconal ministry of our diocese. So, uh, as I promised, there'll be more sent out uh, electronically in a detailed form, but this news is important to share with you, and I'd ask for several things. I ask for your patience, I ask for your support, I ask for your prayer. Um, these transitions are going to be for the next 18 months. We're going to see how we live with these mission uh, responsibilities, part-time, etc., to see how this is working. I'm grateful to the Standing Committee, to the Diocesan Council, to the deans. I'm grateful for Bishop Ed. I've shared all of this with him, and I have his support, uh, along with all those other communities who are part of our, our diocese. So please know that we're here to serve and care for you, to resource you as you engage in God's mission. I look forward to talking more with you about all of this. Thank you. Grace and peace.